Okay, so the ideal characteristics of an op-amp, if I redraw the symbol, it's probably helpful. So this is our output, and these are our inputs, non-inverting and inverting inputs, and this is our positive power supply and negative power supply. Um, so the ideal characteristics of an op-amp are where, let's have a look at the inputs first. The input impedance is infinity. Now what does that mean? What does the input impedance mean? It really means that the current flowing either into or out of the either input is zero. Okay, so the reason why we wanted to have an input impedance of an infinite input impedance is so that if I have a voltage divider connected to one of these, then we don't get current flowing into or out of the voltage divider, and so it doesn't affect that input voltage on the on the pin here. Okay? And so So this current into or out of either of these pins is zero. Okay? So that's one of the uh, ideal characteristics of an op amp. Another is that the output impedance is zero. And in the same way that if we have an infinite input impedance, it basically think of input impedance as being an opposition to the current flow. If we have an infinite impedance, an infinite opposition to the current flow, we don't get any current. If we have zero opposition to the current flow, it means that it provides as much current as is needed. Okay, so the output current is not limited by the, the op amp. Okay, so my out could be anything it needs to be. So I could power an LED, so switch an LED with one of these, or I could power a motor, or a relay, or anything I like for an ideal op amp. In practice though, um, very few op amps do have a zero output impedance. Some have very low output impedance, and um, the way you can tell whether an output, the output impedance of an op-amp is relatively low or not is by when you um, actually draw a current on it, do you measure much of a difference between the output voltage and this supply voltage. So uh, you might have noticed when you're doing your experiments that uh, when you had an LED on the LM741, the output voltage with a supply voltage of about 9 volts, the output voltage may be 6 or 7 volts. But when you took that LED off um, and had no output current there, then that output voltage dropped, jumped up to about eight or eight and a bit volts. And so what you're seeing is the effect of the output impedance reducing that output voltage when there's a current flowing through it. Okay. Um, the other one that we want to know about and prefer to have, now this isn't really um, something that's easy to measure, but it's uh, stability with negative feedback. Okay, so I was explaining this to somebody earlier about how uh, why you might be able to picture this. Let's say with negative feedback, it's the same sort of idea as say if you're driving a car along a slippery road and your back wheels start to slide out a little bit. What you're going to do is trying to turn the wheels such that you want to reduce the difference between the angle that your car is and the angle that you want it to be. So you're trying to reduce the difference between um, what your actual current angle is and what, the, what you want it to be by doing some action that has a negative effect on so turning into the corner, for example, okay, turning into the, the slide. 
if you did that perfectly, you would slide out and then you would sort of straighten up again and keep going. Okay, so if you did that perfectly, there would be no, um, you would get back to, to the direction you want to travel without any trouble at all. If, however, you overshot it, so you didn't do it perfectly, and you started to go the opposite direction, then what you would do is you would go, oh, okay, change the other direction, turn into the, the other direction of the slide, and so what you're going to be doing is going from one side to the other. And if you keep overshooting it, that's right, you're doing this. You're, you're going left and then right and left and then right and zigzagging and, and doing a, a slide that looks like this as you're going along. Okay? That is a, a problem with stability. What it means is that your negative input you're putting into your steering wheel, into your system, is overcompensating for the amount of difference that you need to overcome. And so you overshoot it each time. Okay? And with an amplifier, it's really no different. When you have negative feedback, um, what it's trying to do is it's trying to change the output to be um, the desired output, but if it overshoots it, then what's going to do is it's going to have the output and it's going to be doing this. Okay? Even with a steady input. Okay? So you can have no difference on the inputs here. So your input signal is steady and constant, but your output is actually changing a lot. Okay? That is a symptom of a system uh, of an amplifier that has poor stability. Okay? And for an audio amplifier that can be very bad because you might be able to hear it. Okay? So if it's if this oscillation is in an audible range, then you might be able to hear it. Or likewise, if you've got a radio transmitter or something like that, or a radio receiver, it might be in a range that affects the signal that you're actually trying to send or receive and be added to or subtracted from that signal you're trying to receive, which would be a problem. You don't want that. Okay, so these are the ideal characteristics. Effectively, we've got no current flowing into or out of the inputs. There is no limitation to the current out of, into or out of the output, and it doesn't, under a steady signal or a steady input, we don't have an oscillating output. Okay. Um, 